Hi everyone! In this video we will talk about one of Filterize's greatest features, the Table of Contents feature. And I'm doing this because we know that at the moment the configuration is maybe a little confusing, but I hope in the end it would be more clear how to do it. And we promise we will simplify the Table of Contents configuration in the near future. Because it's such a great feature, your table of content don't have to be as inflexible as the Evernote version maybe is. So Filterize gives you an option to have self-refreshing table of contents and a lot more information in its entries, like a reminder time or the last time the node was modified or the author's name. And there are just a few examples and there are a lot more possibilities. I will show you them a little later during the video. So, table of contents are a really helpful tool with Filterize. Before we start, from now on I will use TOCs instead of table of contents, just because it's shorter. So, TOC means table of contents. Well, I will show you now all steps to configure your own TOCs and I will give you all necessary requirements and informations you will need to get it to work. Then let's go to console.filterize.net, open the filter menu and go to a specific stack to start a new filter configuration or just start it in here. Now enter a, stack, a name for your TOC filter and if you're outside of any stacks, a stack name. If you don't determine a stack here, your filter will be listed at the stack and categorized. And now the new and interesting part starts. As you know, all automations in Filterize are easy if-then rules. So if a condition is full filed, do some kind of action. Therefore, normally it's necessary to set some kind of condition. In case of TUCs, I recommend to have no conditions at the beginning, because they often make the usage of the TUC filter in, filter in Evernote a little tricky and mostly they are not necessary. So I won't set any conditions here for now. At the end I show you some use cases for which you will need conditions, but mostly you need no condition at all, really trust me. Then let's move on to the action part. There is a TOC action at the section template. Open it and now a new menu appears and here we have to do several settings. I will explain them step by step, also their meaning and variations. Okay, then we start on top with search for. Filterize allows you to have TOCs in every node you want, as many as you want and at every place you want them within the node. So you can create for example a node for your team and for every single member an overview of his or her to-dos. But Filterize somehow needs to know which of your nodes is a TOC node and where to place that TOC within the node. That's why you need a unique marker for every TOC action you create. That could be something like TOC in double curly brackets or something in box brackets. But it has to be unique for every single TOC automation and you need the brackets to differentiate it from your normal text. Because after you have finished the configuration at Filterize, you go to your Evernote, insert your new marker somewhere into the node and the marker will be replaced after about two Evernote syncs with the specific um, TOC you have defined before. Okay, then let's pick a marker. I will use for this now test in double curly brackets, so use whatever you want. The next setting is Evernote search query. It's maybe a little confusing at the moment what this field is for. You indicate here which nodes will be part of your TOC. Many people thought this will be selected by the condition part of the filter, but that's not true. You indicate here, inside the TUC action, which nodes will be in your TUC. How to indicate your nodes? 
the same way you search for notes in Evernote. Let me show you a little example. I want to search now for all my notes with a specific tag in Evernote, like all notes with the tag task. You don't know how to do this? There is an Evernote support article about how to use Evernote's advanced search syntax. The link is in the description below. And here's an overview of all search operators and a description and examples for each of them. And here is the tag operator. Okay, so I have to enter tag double dot task to get those notes. And if I enter exactly this search query at my TUC action in Filterize, my TUC will be composed of only notes with that specific tag. Actually, very easy. But let's go back to Evernote now to see, or to this Evernote article to see which other operators are available. So as you can see, you can search for many, many different things. For example, title parts with in title. A notebook will limit the results or to a specific notebook or search for notes with checkboxes with this to do operator. We have the minus operator to negate a search and a lot more options. And all those operators you can use exactly the same way at Filterize to indicate notes for your TUC. And of course you can combine those search operators. For example, enter notebook, project one, tag, task, to do false. Now the result is limited to notes which fulfilled all those three conditions. Your TUC then will be composed of notes out of the notebook project one with a tag task and unchecked checkboxes. Obviously, notes that don't fulfill all three conditions won't be included at your TUC. This way you have an AND operator. And then there is the ANY operator Evernote provides. Use it in the same way as before, so we can enter ANY tag task to, to do false and our TUC contains now all notes having only the tag task and only unchecked checkboxes and those notes for which both is full filed. But use the any operator carefully, it's sometimes doing surprising things. And unfortunately there is no possibility to combine the AND operator with the OR operator. So something like um, all notes with the tag task from notebook 1 or notebook 2 um, won't work. Okay, now some really good news. We have almost finished the tough part and it's getting a little less sophisticated for the next steps. Our next option is only same notebook. Your TUC will later be of course in one of your notebooks. Activate only same notebook and the result, so the entries within your TUC, is limited to notes within the same notebook as your TOC note is. To have self-refreshing um, TOCs, uh, you have to activate the re refresh on note update. So your note then will be updated once an hour and additionally every time you modify your TOC note. Now we have to do some listing and style decisions. First, in which way should your TUC entries be ordered? By title, date of creation, by last update or reminder time. Second, do you want checkboxes at the entries begin? No, or just for notes with reminders, or yes always? But please notice those checkboxes are just for information purposes. You cannot influence the related note with them. So please don't check those checkboxes here. In case you have them for reminders, they will be automatically checked when you mark the related reminder as done. Next setting is about insert tags. Enable it and all tags the note has will be listed behind the notes title within your TOC entry. 
And then the list style, you can choose plain list, so there will be no bullets or numbering. Ordered list will apply a numbering to all entries, so entry 1, 2, 3 and so on. And unordered list adds just bullets. So, we are almost done. There are only two settings left and the prefix setting is maybe a little tough again, so time to wake up. At prefix you can enter something that should be added to your TUC entries in front of the notes title. Sounds maybe not that impressive and useful, but actually it is. Because this way you can add things like reminder times, the last time the note was modified, the author's name and so on. Um, here's an overview which additions are possible and of course the link is also in the description below. I want to add now reminder times to my entries of the TUC, so I have to use this um, reminder time prefix. Please notice that it's absolutely case sensitive. So you need those um, box brackets, reminder time in uppercase and um, that underscore. And afterwards I have to specify a time format. Therefore the standard Unix STRP time is implemented at Filterize. Sounds maybe a little scary, but this just means the time is encoded in percent and a letter. You can write them behind one another separated by space. For example, year is encoded by percent in uppercase Y, month in percent M in lowercase and day in percent D in lowercase. And if I add this now to my prefix, I got something like this. And now I have a reminder time as year, month, day in front of my TUC entry. And instead of st space between the date fields, you also can add dots, slashes, minus or whatever you want. And as you can see here, below are a lot more variations. So you can add also weekdays or month in short or full name or if your reminder time is a.m. or p.m. and a lot more possible options. Just have a look here if you're interested. Now, finally, this is really the last setting, the default text. It will be inserted if there are no entries for your TUC available and you can enter something like, hey, nothing to do or whatever you like. Just a little nice to know. After you have inserted your TUC marker somewhere in the node, Filterize replace it with your TUC. It could be that there are no entries for now. Then it will be replaced by your default text. If you haven't set one, it will be replaced by nothing. So your TUC somehow becomes invisible. We recommend to always enter some kind of default text just to remember that there is something. And now, drum rolls, we are done. We have defeated the TOC configuration. Don't forget to save your TOC filter with the check mark at the upper right margin and go back to Evernote, create a new node, insert a TOC marker somewhere and your automated TOC will appear, or maybe your default text. So as you have seen, we have a fine working TOC without setting any conditions. And now I want to give you an intuition when to set some conditions. We have learned the settings we have done within the TOC action indicates which nodes should be included at your TOC. Conditions specify where or when to place your TOC or mostly where not to place a TUC. Imagine you create a node where you collect all your TUC markers. Then it won't be helpful if they were all replaced by a related TUC. Or you maybe have temp a template notebook with all your default templates. If they have TUC markers inside, you don't want them to be replaced. So for both situations, you can insert a condition at your filter. Open in notebook as condition 
then select a notebook, for example templates, and negate that condition. So now all your markers will be replaced by a TUC, but not those in our templates notebook. And as a second use case, reuse markers. I have mentioned before that markers need to be unique if you don't have any conditions, otherwise it won't be clear which TUC filterize should apply. But if you limit a TUC to one specific notebook with that in notebook condition again, it means that this specific TUC will only be applied if it is somewhere in that specific notebook. So if you are outside of this notebook, you can reuse the marker. Because in any other notebook, this specific filter won't work. So open conditions, then in notebooks and choose a notebook. And don't negate it, of course. Use conditions just if you really, really need them. And always keep in mind that you just specify where and when to apply a TUC, not its content. Okay. Now we are really done. I hope you have a good intuition now how to configure your own TUCs and we promise again we will simplify it. I know it was a lot for today, so let me summarize the mainly important things for you. With Filterize you get self-refreshing table of contents in every note you want, as many as you want and you can place them everywhere inside a note. One of the best use cases and team to do overview. Markers define where to place a TOC inside a note and they should be unique. To differentiate them from normal text, use box or curly brackets. You indicate your TOC content at the TOC action by Evernote search query with the Evernote search operators. And finally, you mostly don't need any conditions, use them sparingly if you have to. Now have fun trying out what you have learned today. You have any questions, ideas, suggestions, feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching and see you next time.